as you know, Raley's is a local, family-owned business that has been committed to serving its community since 1935 throughout Northern California and Nevada. And you know, during this year, huh, 2020, right? This trying year, Raley's wants us all to know we are all in this together. So, who better to partner with today than the local chef, one of Sacramento's hottest chefs, who put local in his restaurant's name? Localis. We are in Rayleigh's Kitchen with Chef Chris Barnum Dan. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, you are showing us how to cook like you today, uh, how to cook fish like you, which is especially exciting. What are you making for us? We're going to pan sear some uh, steelhead, uh, beautiful fish uh, with the skin on. So often it gets thrown away, and we want to kind of show how to, how to eat it and enjoy it. Um, a late summer succotash, kind of saying goodbye to summer with uh, pretty much a fancy word for sauteed things together. And then uh, adding some uh, sauce that's called subis. It's not a very used sauce in the, by the home chefs and I would really love to see it become that. So hopefully we can uh, get that to more people today. Yeah, you know what I love? It's this very fancy sounding dish, you know, the skin on, a succotash, a subis. If people are coming over, that sounds, or you're cooking for your family, of course, yeah. that sounds very fancy. but. It's actually pretty simple, and it's all using ingredients that you can find at your local Rayleigh supermarket, which is awesome. Yeah, definitely. I think um, fish is one of those things people get worried about cooking yeah. fish. Um, it's not very hard, and um, it's fun, and it's, it is a cool way. We're going we're gonna to showcase some, uh, some stuff today that I think looks really beautiful, so try to create good presentation when you, even if you're cooking for your seven-year-old daughter or son, you know, like make the food look amazing and beautiful, and they're probably going to want to eat it more, so. Absolutely. Well, let's get started. Cool. So we're going to start off by uh, getting the succotash going. Okay. Um, like I said, pretty much just a fancy word for uh, saute of different things together. Um, you can have a succotash of really anything, uh, but right now we're kind of concentrating, like I said, uh, on the end of summer uh, bounty. Mm -hmm. I love the end of summer because uh, you still get most of the summer uh, produce that's happening. But uh, things get a little sweeter as uh, the nights get a little cooler and the, and the drawing or the uh, growing gets kind of drawn out a little bit. Okay. So it's a really fun time to, uh, to play with these ingredients. Yeah. So we're going to start by sauteing off some onions. Um, a trick that I use all the time is uh, salting your onions when you saute them um, because it actually extracts some moisture and uh, gives them a little bit better ability to get their flavors out uh, into whatever else you're sauteing with them. So. Okay. Well, let's talk about the ingredients for just a little bit. I know Michelin Guide uh, talked about you at one point saying mm -hmm. that you bent over backwards sourcing your ingredients well. So I know this is something that really matters to you, where yeah. ingredients come from. And mm -hmm. Rayleigh's is really committed to using local ingredients as often as possible. For instance, you know, one of the farms that they get their produce from is Cape Valley Organics. Um, I know you love Cape Valley. I do, uh, yeah. Family-run farm, committed to sustainability. I read, you know, the parents who started the farms in the 1970s started the Davis Farmers Market. So again, it's that full circle of community. Yeah, I really love living here in Northern California. That's one of the greatest things that we have here is the ability to have so much local produce right at our fingertips all year long. It doesn't matter what time of year it is, there's always delicious stuff growing and uh, the sense of community and farmers here is, is pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah, you must be able to see it a lot. Yeah, we do. And um, we have a lot of little farmers that come into the restaurant and uh, you know, with their all throughout the year with different you know, things, here, try this and try that. And, it's, um, it's really fun to be so small as a restaurant because we get to work with smaller and smaller and smaller farmers, you know, even if they only grow one thing and it's not very much of it, we get to actually use that. So it's been really fun and exciting to uh, continue the growth of the restaurant and my career here in Sacramento. Yeah. Okay. So we're sauteing the onions. What do we put yes. in next? Uh, well, we're going to go through, um, you kind of want to add the longest cooking ingredients first. Uh, so we're going to do the corn first once the corn gets, uh, nice and hot and starts cooking down a little bit, then we'll start adding in the peppers, uh, finishing off with uh, some last of the season heirloom tomatoes, which are really, really amazing right now when the weather gets a little cooler and they're not so stressed out during the daytime. Um, we'll finish off with a little bit of herbs, um, some parsley and some basil, um, and then, uh, then we'll start cooking our fish after that, so. Oh, it sounds so fresh, just listening to the ingredients. <laughs> so I'm just gonna add in the corn. So it's going to take one of the longest times to cook. I'm going to get it in early so you can soften up with everything else. I do think my favorite food on the planet is Sacramento area corn. 
<laughs> it's, a, it's extremely good. And, um, you know, as the season goes on and uh, the plants have a little bit easier time growing, uh, we get really beautiful corn right at the end. And, of course, corn mazes afterwards. So yeah. it's, it's all fun. I know you'd probably be proud to be serving this quality of food anywhere in the world, but what does it mean to you to be able to do it in Sacramento, in this area where you're rooted? Well, I mean, to be totally honest with you, the idea of competition is always something that's appealing to me. I love competition. Um, and if you want to be a chef cooking seasonal local stuff, there's not really a city in the world that's more prone to that than Sacramento. So it's really fun to be in Sacramento because we, we know good produce, you know, so when someone comes into your restaurant, um, they already know, you know, like, the, hey, that tomato better be the best tomato, or this, you know, has to be really good, or the corn has to be represented in a great way. So there's always that feeling, you know, that Sacramento is watching out for what you're serving. So it's really cool and unique experience to have a, a community so involved with where their food comes from, not just what they're eating right in front of them. You can hear that we have high expectations, Sacramento. Absolutely. <laughs> so it's kind of fun. As you can see, uh, you know, we're getting into the beginning of fall, the end of summer. And uh, this succotash, uh, if you see the colors, very much looks like Halloween. You yeah. know? So it's kind of fun. Um, nature kind of shows you what's in season and what's happening. And it kind of follows that same color scheme that we think of as, you know, fall and all those kind of things. So Nature's candy corn. It is. So absolutely. What's your yeah. take on candy corn? Um, Hot topic. It, it's a mood item for me. <laughs> yeah. Like I have to be in the mood to want okay. to eat candy corn, but I don't. I'm not a hater. Uh, that's for sure. As you're salting those vegetables, you know I, I want to comment on uh, Rayleigh's brand. You know Rayleigh's is committed to uh, offering great food, uh, locally sourced quality food, but also committed to doing it at a reasonable price. So a lot of the Rayleigh's brand ingredients are offered. You know that's national. The quality of national brands but at a very reasonable price. So committed to just feeding everyone um, and doing it reasonably, which as you said, you know, it's, it's great to be able to have those approachable uh, groceries to be able to buy. Oh yeah, it's, it's really nice to be here in Northern California, especially with places, you know, like Rayleigh's that are so centered on trying to bring things in from local farms. Uh, so you get to support, you know, farmers uh, in your local area without having to really work at it too hard. You, know, you can go into a lot of places here in Sacramento and you're going to get really fresh, delicious produce. So, And adding the salt, something that I wanted to make sure to tell everyone is, is add your salt throughout the whole cooking process. That way it works itself into, into the food. If you just salt afterwards, you're salting the outside only. So try to, if you can, remember to oftentimes just uh, season as you're cooking um, and then taste. Um, one thing that I, I, I do some cooking lessons here and there, and one thing that I'm constantly promoting is the fact that taste your food, because so often you make it from a recipe or for something else, and then you don't taste it. And then you get down and you're like, ah, oh, it needs salt or it needs this, you know? So doing that ahead of time uh, is something very valuable. So how do you know that those are ready for the next step? Well, I'm just kind of watching. They're starting to get lightly translucent. Um, the onions were first, uh, got those sweated down, which means no color and just cooked lightly. Um, then we added our corn in and we kind of waited until that started changing color. Now my bell peppers are starting to get uh, really beautiful and a little bit soft. Um, and that's the time where we're gonna add in the last of the tomatoes of the season. Um, those obviously cook pretty quick. Um, so we want to add those in at the very end. Um, I like doing dishes with no uh, starch. Um, I mean, there's plenty of starch and corn, um, so you kind of get that from it. But I think the old idea of having to have, you know, your protein, your starch, and your vegetables is a little outdated. And uh, I often find that I don't really, I'm not really searching for some of those things. So I kind of like when I get to do something like this that kind of caters to both uh, the starchy side of your meal and also your vegetable side. So right. I'm sure health conscious people are appreciative of that too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's no reason to add all the extra stuff if you don't need to or if you're not looking for it. I like to eat pretty light because I eat a lot. <laughs> so if I eat a lot of really heavy food, it doesn't work out very well. But So I'm going to let this cook down just a little bit and we're going to get our fish going. Um, so this is going to be kind of fun here. Yeah, so this is steelhead, and can you explain to people what steelhead is? Because there are some misconceptions. Yeah, it's it's a trout, yeah. um, but it looks a lot like a salmon and um, spends a lot more time 
fresh water than it does salt water. Um, hopefully that fact checks out correctly. Um, but it's a, it's a local ingredient as well um, from the west coast, maybe not necessarily you know, right off the coast of California, although there are steelhead you know, around. Um, but just one of those fish that I think is uh, really appealing. It's a lot smaller than typical salmon, so if, if you were getting a side of something, um, you can get a whole side of it, which is really nice, rather than a huge, huge uh, piece of salmon. So it's really tasty. It's delicate, and it's less fatty than uh, traditional salmon, so you get a little bit more uh, flavor with a little bit less fat out of it. And this steelhead in particular is wild caught. It's third party certified sustainable. Um, anytime you go to Rayleigh's and buy seafood, it's either sustainably wild caught or uh, responsibly farmed. So again, you can go get your groceries, know that it's coming from a good responsible place. Yeah. And that's nice, especially with seafood. You know, a lot of people are turned off by seafood because they've had bad seafood. So when you can get something that's really fresh and really clean, um, especially if you're you know, doing good by the planet in the meantime, I think it's a really good thing. And uh, especially skin, like we talked about, yes. so often it gets thrown away. I love crispy skin. Not every fish's skin can be cooked like this, um, but the scales are so small on, on steelhead that you can cook them right up. They'll be very crispy and delicious. And it also gives you a little barrier, so you've got to worry so much about your timing um, because there's a little bit of uh, protection against overcooking right away. Right, and that worries people a lot. I mean, fish is something that I think freaks a lot of people out, to be quite yes. honest, when they're cooking at home, uh, especially cooking with the skin on. Even if you are comfortable cooking fish at home, cooking with the skin on might scare you a lot. So what is your technique that you're using? Well, um, use a high oil or a high temperature oil. We're using uh, grapeseed, very uh, neutral, doesn't have a lot of flavor, and uh, it's also uh, has a very high smoke point. And I waited until my smoke or my my pan was just barely whisking a little bit of smoke. It's not like bellowing, obviously, and no discoloration. That's that bad flavor. Um, but if you get it in there, if you wait and wait and wait, that's the hardest part for people that don't cook a lot of fish is, uh, you know, you put the fish in and it sticks. Right. If it does stick, leave it. Turn it up and it'll eventually form a, a, a crust and lift off the pan. So don't go in there and, and scrape your <laughs> and scrape your pan. So it tells you when fish. it's ready. Pretty much, yeah, yeah as, far as, as far as the sticking goes. But if you wait until that perfect time, you can see um, this is not a nonstick pan and they're very fluid moving around, so everything works there. And uh, we're going to wait until I start seeing some brownness on the outside. Um, we're still using that high temperature. Um, and at that same time, I am going to add uh, the herbs to our succotash over here. We don't want them cooked for long periods of time. We want to keep them nice and fresh. What a beautiful, colorful meal. Yeah, I try to. You know, that's like I said, if you, if you let nature do its thing, usually it'll give you wonderful uh, colors and flavors for anything that's in that. Time period. I threw a tiny bit of butter in there, um, just because, you know, butter. Yeah. If you put your herbs in too early, uh, they tend to cook a lot of the flavor out, and you don't really get as much of it as you'd want. Um, this is a nice, bright dish, you know, for the end of summer, beginning of fall. Um, so we try to throw those in at the very last minute. And so tell me about putting the butter in at the end with the herbs. Well, I, I don't want the, the butter to really get cooked into everything. I want it to just be kind of a sauce and most around the succotash. And if you add it at the very beginning, they will kind of start changing that and uh, the butter will become part of the pan rather than part of the sauce at the end. So. And you also mentioned you wanted to use a high uh, heat, high temperature oil, so that's probably the butter might burn. Is that? Yeah, it? yeah. Or that was with the fish. Yeah, with mind. the fish. On the succotash, not yeah. so much because we're, we're doing it fairly low heat, okay. you know, throughout. We don't want any color on there. So um, I'm going to salt the top side of my fish, or the bottom side, I should say, just a little bit too. The skin was seasoned as well. Um, salt extracts moisture, so you don't want to season your skin too early because it'll draw moisture out and make it a little bit harder to sear your fish. So we will now flip this over. Now for the folks at home who love fish, don't think they love fish skin, what can you say to convince them? Because fish skin done right is, I mean, it's so like a, good and crispy. Oh, it's so good. It's fish bacon. So yeah. that's, that's how you could get people to <laughs> okay, eat it, right? Perfect. If you call it bacon, yeah. <laughs> people are going to eat it for sure. So, uh, so now I don't want to cook it too much. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shut my succotash off. That's finished. And uh, now we're going to add some butter. Now what we're doing with this is, uh, I'll turn the heat off completely now. 
because um, the pan's going to stay hot enough. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to lightly uh, baste the fish and uh, send some of that very hot oil now with some butter over the top. Uh, because the temperature is so high, it'll continue to crisp up the skin a little bit and give it a really nice glossy finish um, that we're looking for. One thing about fish often is it gets overcooked a lot. Um, so don't be afraid to eat, you know, especially when it's this fresh and this beautiful. You right. can eat it raw, so why overcook it? You know, leave yourself a little bit of uh, room. And you often see chefs basting their uh, meat and fish. Why, what does basting do? It adds flavor. You're, you're incorporating flavored ingredients over the top of it. Um, even now, you know, we can add in just a little bit of lemon juice. Continue our basting, and this is an easy thing. It, it looks scary, you know. You see mm -hmm. chefs in these restaurants doing this. It's so easy. Just tilt your pan back. Uh, you should leave your heat on if you're going to baste for long amounts of time, because the butter and the oil and whatever else you have in there will eventually cool down, and then you're not cooking anymore. Um, but it's a great way to add some flavor, and as you can see, the skin uh, has really beautiful glossiness to it. So it's very appealing to have that fat layer on top of there. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah, so we'll get those out. That's ready to go. Um, here we have uh, sauce soubise. So, sounds fancy, um, and I use it all the time because it's such a cool vehicle for so many things. This one is onions and squash with just a hint of basil, um, but pretty much it's onions cooked in cream is what soubise is as a sauce. Okay. Um, and you just uh, barely cover your onions uh, with cream and cook them at you know, medium-low temperature until the onions are very soft and then you blend it all together, um, season it with whatever you want to season it with, but you can start adding in things from all different times of year. So you can do butternut squash, you can do summer squash like this one. Um, I mean, we've done soubise of pretty much any vegetable out there, so it's yeah. a really fun sauce, yeah. Okay, so would you always cook uh, onions with the cream and then add the vegetable to yeah, it? Yeah, or sometimes okay. you can just do a soubise of just squash or just whatever you want and it still works the same. Uh, the cream enables it to be thick enough to actually be a sauce, which mm -hmm. is really nice. Um, oh, but wow. this one is, uh, is you know, nice light green in color. It was yellow squash that we used for the most part. You could use all green and have better color if you want. Um, but I just added a little bit of basil in there. Um, really beautiful aromatic. Uh, presentation, really important. Like I said, even if it's for your seven-year-old son or daughter, mm -hmm. um, spend a little bit of extra time and make it look nice. And that wasn't so hard, just spooning that sauce onto... <laughs> no, not at all, yeah. yeah. And um, before I get too far, remember to taste. How is it? It's really good, okay. yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, you get lucky every once in a while. You don't have to add anything or take mm -hmm. away anything or fix anything. So... Well, if it's not broken, you know, those vegetables, exactly. exactly. Right? If you get quality produce, you're just... That really is the thing. The more you cook mm -hmm. in season, the easier it is to make food taste really good. You know? right. It's not hard when your ingredients start out so good. Right. So. None of these are ingredients you want to hide. You shouldn't use ingredients you want to hide, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Oh, how beautiful is that? And, uh, you know, lemon and fish is such a thing, but mm -hmm. uh, it won't really hurt your skin too much to have just a little bit of lemon on there to brighten up a fish and there we go. I wish you could all smell this at home and just to re, you know reiterate you can cook like a chef like one of yeah. the best chefs in Sacramento make it look this beautiful and you're getting quality locally sourced ingredients from Rayleigh's um, and you know again to reiterate we are all in this together. Yeah. The restaurant industry has had a tough year so we cannot stress enough support local when you can when you can go out and eat you know support locally owned restaurants and when you want to shop for groceries, cook yourself a nice meal at home, shop local, shop Rayleigh's. And, you know, when you're eating at Localis, when you're shopping from Rayleigh's, you're not just supporting one business, you're supporting, supporting the farms, you're supporting um, the nonprofits that each of you give back to. So, Absolutely. It's a long chain of people that are affected by this. So it's, it's always good to remember that it's not just the restaurant, it's not just the store, it's not just the purveyor, it's not just the farmer. The line of people goes so far in our food culture 
um, that it is very, very important. And something like this, you know, like uh, is very easy to put together and mm -hmm. all of you can make that at home, no problem. And this is a great dish to make because we wouldn't serve this in our current to-go menu because the skin wouldn't be crispy when you get home. So certain things that we don't do because of travel mm -hmm. uh, restrictions. Um, so those are definitely the meals that you should make at home. And uh, it's easy and don't be afraid and um, know that you're probably gonna mess up. It's not like we don't mess up. I could have messed this up today. You know? <laughs> so that's just what happens. But take a chance, learn something new, and, uh, and cook for your family and make them eat it. I know my boys don't wanna try anything like this, but after they try it, you know, they do the whole like, I don't know, I like it a little bit, you right. know? but then they end up eating the whole plate, so. Yeah, so bottom line, when you eat and when you shop local, everybody wins. Absolutely. Especially the ones eating it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>